Hello everybody and welcome back to part two on this Peco C20. Alright now in this video in part two I'm just going to go over everything I did to it which like I said before didn't have to do a whole lot as far as changing out things. We'll start up here at the top and right here I think you can see that this capacitor that was up here if you remember it was across and went over here and they was a uh, yeah you can see right here this solder tab was screwed in over here and this being you know kind of had to do that to get and really do it like that and make it look good so or maybe even fit it in there so they went with what they had there so I moved that over took it loose more there screwed it down over here and replaced it here with this capacitor and it's the same thing this is a 0.22 microfarad this one here was a 0.22 microfarad bring a little more light over in this area don't get it too bright this here is 0.22 this is 600 volt and that's 630 volt um, replaced it with one of the good uh, Illinois capacitors um, and when I did this too, something else you need to think of when you're putting these in is find out, like you see this one here, it shows this line that indicates where the outside foil is. And uh, see this big one here, it says it right on it right there, outside foil. So it's a good idea to put that and, you know, take it to the, like that needs to go to ground. That way we're shielded all the way up, outside full all the way around, to just right here going into this here. We're not picking up anything stray or anything weird. In this one here, this test equipment's not so bad. But in some test equipment or an audio amplifier, stuff like that, it's real bad. If you get the capacitors backwards, it'll still work. But you can pick up slight hum, and sometimes it can really get annoying. Sometimes just barely in the background you hear or something, you know, but it's real lower than what you heard me do. But if you're on stage, a lot of noise and really getting down with it or something, you're not going to really tell it. But in a quiet environment where you're doing some instrumentals or something, or if you're just trying to use it for an amplifier that you're listening to music yourself, um, you're listening to some nice, easy listening music, and you hear that hum in the background sometimes, and you know you've went through it and went through it. Um, it's because you got your capacitor installed backwards. If you go to Mr. Carlson's lab, if you you're probably familiar with them, if you're not, that's a good ch channel to go to. Uh, that's like the guru Mr. Carlson is. But he's got a video on that, and he shows you how to find it. Uh, the uh, you can take an oscilloscope and find the uh, which side you know the has got the foil on it. And anyway, after touching on that, we'll get back to it here. Also, I went and cleaned it up somewhat. I didn't go crazy. Like, I didn't take this, this particular, you know, part, pull everything off and try to get all this stuff off these markings. I just left them there. You know, some guy built it. That's what he did, you know, and it's the little story it tells. So, I'll leave it there. And I did check this tube, and I was glad it checked out good because it's the original Payco. It checked out really, really good. I even checked some of these capacitors. Like I pulled them out. And they were still showing good. Uh, but just as general rule of thumb, when it comes to this older equipment, you know, the capacitors like that, they got to go. Unless it's a disc capacitor or a mica capacitor like over here or something. I mean, they just, you got to get rid of them. I think this thing's probably got low miles on it. But anyway, so I did that. And let's get this thing... Let me pull this tube out a minute. Always be careful taking these tubes out. You don't want to break the index and key on it. That's really, really tight. I mean, when that first came out, that was really tight. So, I don't think it's ever been out of there. Now, I went through and checked all the resistors. And these precision resistors, they were good. What surprised me is every one of these other resistors, I went through and checked all of them. Take them a little bit out of the circuit and checked them, put them back in. 
they checked good. They was one of them up for here. Um, this, I think it was, if you can see that where the camera is right now, but under here that was dead on. So that was good. And if you remember right here, this one I just pulled out, this big pasture was right here. This one tested bad. On my other tester I put that on there and that was bad, bad, bad. It was actually arcing a little bit. I've got another, I had another, it's a 2.2 microfarad. This was a 2 microfarad here. Um, and this one's 200 volts. I think this one's like 630, yeah, another 630. But it was, it's precision 5%. You know, in this day and time, you may, you know, newer capacitors made a lot better than they were back then, especially if you get some of these good, like, Illinois capacitors and stuff. You don't have to worry so much with something like this being precision. Yeah, newer things or other things, a different kind of a circuit, a different kind of test equipment. Yes, you got to be real picky about the capacitors. But this one here, I just happen to have this one. The other precision capacitor on top um, that I changed out. You see, I changed out the Illinois capacitor, so went too bad this here was I move stuff around a little bit but I don't but it was a four microfarad at I think 200 volt I think or 150 volt something like that uh where it is let me just look yeah it's four microfarad at 250 volt I replaced it to 4.7 microfarad at 350 volt and there again you see how smaller that is and then here if you remember there was one across here was this 8 microfarad at 525 volts and I don't have anything that high in voltage so what I did was I found two 16 microfarad put them in series of course when you do that with the capacitor it halves the capacitance in half so it's exactly 8 microfarad and these are 475 volt a piece so now or 950 volts, so we're really good on that, and that's fine. Um, you can see I tidy up the wire some, brought things around. This one here, I wouldn't never could decide how I want to do that, so that's the way that is for now. Still may tidy that up. Some of these wires are a little more messy. I brought them around, tidied them up, did all that. Let me come over here and look at the switch. I replaced those. And you can see this darker green wire. The light green is what was there. I went with green because that's what, you know, it don't matter, you know, which color you go with. To a point, you know, it's good to have the right colors for certain markings, you know, so somebody else knows. Or I know myself in the future. Um, if you go by the assembly manual, it's talking about using a green wire for this, this, and this, and the green wire here. I replaced this one because that's the one, if you remember in the first video, looked like somebody took a their soldering iron just went all over it with it and had marks all over it. It was still good. It wasn't really any better spots, but, you know, it was all... Somebody, I guess, was trying to get inside here and do something after the fact or did something. They put that in first, then went in here to do something else and kept hitting the side of it. So I replaced that. Everything else looked good. The connection's good. I rechecked all the connections. Uh, another thing I did, too, is went in here and... We're not really here, but like I cleaned all the contacts in here on the switch, and I all these potentiometers. Uh, there's one down here for your power factor. Um, yeah, right there. One there for the main. There's that one. I cleaned them all up, flushed them out good. They just seem to be working really good. Put a meter on it and watch them go back and forth like they're supposed to be. Um, and two, you can see right here, there was that other, just a regular capacitor there, that's going from the line in, I changed that to a safety capacitor, so if it ever does fail, it'll fail open, I don't have any problems there, so, um, what else, cleaned everything up, checked the I-tube, it was good, and so I think that's, I mean, like I said, the, the uh, line cord was good, so I left it. A lot of times I've changed these out, but this one was good. Um, let's put this tube back in there. And then, so we what I did to the front here. 
I changed out, you remember these, I'm supposed to have these gray ones, these uh, light gray knobs from the factory. I only had two on it, somebody put a black one here, and I didn't have any more that matched this. So I had these white ones. These, these are uh, aftermarket, uh, but they look really good. And I changed those out with the white ones, and I think it looks pretty neat that way, so I think I'll leave it like that anyway. Um, this, I straightened up when I had it on. I noticed that the, I had it from the back end. Um, I just left it in here and just, you know, put a wire to it to light it up. And I noticed this, the eye is supposed to open and close on the bottom. It was kind of off to the side here. So I carefully went on and rotated that and lined that up where it's supposed to be. Cleaned everything. Like I said, I didn't worry about these little paint nicks because this is really a good piece, you know, for its age. So, I mean, that's pretty much the run of it there. What I did to it, I think I still need to go back over these here again. I hit them a little bit. You can see they're kind of shiny a little bit, but still not perfect. Um, I didn't have to pull them out. Another thing too, you're pulling things like that out and cleaning them or changing them. Or like here, where I went in, and was telling you about where I moved the solder lug from here to here. I had to take this screw out, the nut off the back, pull this out, take this off, move it back over here, put this back in. You do stuff like that. I always make sure you get things like this here is not too critical on this piece you know but make sure you get things good and tight because like where you really gonna have a thing is right here you see where these things might be using this for sometimes and I don't I think this one's floating the whole time yeah this is isolated that's isolated yeah it's isolated everywhere so this one wouldn't matter but sometimes your equipment We'll have a piece like this, we'll mount to another piece like this, or you can see where this bracket's coming down in here, and it's holding the magic eye tube in place. It's coming down in there, and it's got screws, you know, holding it in. So it's a good idea to go in and, you know, make sure these are really good and tight. Double check them, I already did that. Um, Check, change any screws out or anything and another thing you know if you get this one loose on the front here you can't see the front but it comes through right in here if it's loose this would be loose which again this is our safety capacitor so it'd be kind of eh, not that big a deal but something else would you know it would lose its ground so another thing you know people don't think about when you go through and do a restore on these things is just go through Check your screw tightness, but you know, especially on where pieces of metal are going to come together because if this needs to have, say, this is a piece had something screwed to it to go, you know, for another power circuit for its ground, and this over here is your main, say, your power supply and it's grounded or whatever. And there's this gets loose in here enough to, you know, get corrosion in there or whatever, and it don't make real good contact, you're going to start having intermittent there where that ground is or arcing. So, there's thing to check out. But, anyhow, there it is. There's what I did. And then I'll probably end this video right here. And I'll come back in the, the final video, part three. And I'll have the case back on it. And we'll go through the alignment procedure, which is real easy. All it does is this set screw. Let's see if you can see that up in there. And you get your precision resistor or match your resistor. I don't have a precision. This one says 200k to use for alignment. I've got um, some 200k resistors. Plenty of them I went through with my you know modern meter until I found one that was dead on or real close. I think it was 199.999 or something. Um, so it's one on being off. So that's close enough. So. You need to get one or find one for that. And then when you're attuning it, you look for that opening. 
and say it opens right here we know that's 200k because you got your precision resistor in there very carefully loosen this set screw enough that you don't turn that potentiometer and slide this around where this will line up with 200k right there and then carefully tighten it back down but we'll go over that see if it needs it and usually it, they do over time and I've changed out some components so most likely they'll need it but anyway so I uh, hope you enjoyed this and I'll come back part three um, we'll uh, go through it and test out some things and go through the operation of it if you like this video don't forget to hit that thumbs up and leave a comment below if you have any questions or anything and until the next video this is Michael KE4EST 73